to everyone, I'm your Mr. ATL and welcome back to my channel. So today's video, we're going to discuss down payment, gross balance, and current increased balance. So let's start! So at the end of this video lesson, you're expected to compute down payment, gross balance, and current increased balance. So let us start with the down payment. It is an initial payment you give when you buy something pricey or expensive. This payment is deducted from the purchase price. You minimize the remaining balance to the company when you provide a down payment. So, for example, meron kang isang bibilhin na mahal para sa iyo dahil kakaunti lang ang pera mo at masyadong mataas yung presyo. So, para hindi ka mabigatan sa pagbabayad, mayroong mga kumpanya na nagpapabayad muna ng down payment and then next naman yung natira or yung remaining balance. Okay. The higher the down payment, the lower the remaining balance is. So, of course, kung mas mataas ang down payment mo, mas mababa na lang yung iyong remaining balance. Kung mas mababa naman ang down payment mo, of course, mas marami pa yung iyong remaining balance or yung mga babayaran mo pa. So, let us have a problem. Example number one. Eldrian wants to buy a car amounting to 1.1 million pesos. The agreement with the company is that the customer should submit all the requirements with a down payment before taking home the car. How much are the down payment and the remaining balance if Eldrian will give a 30% down payment? Okay, so as you can see here, um, ang price ng ating Ang price ng car is 1.1 million pesos. So, yun yung babayaran ni Eldrian. 1.1 million pesos. So, the agreement with the company is that the customer should submit all the requirements with a down payment before taking home the car. So, syempre may mga requirements na kailanganin doon para as proof na ikaw talaga yung nagpo-purchase or si Eldrian talaga yung nagpo-purchase ng car. So, kasama dyan malamang ang ID ang, um, at iba pang mga requirements. So, kabilang dun sa mga requirements na yun, yung certificate of employment, kung sakaling employee yung isang, um, kung employee man si LDN, and so many more. So, ang focus natin is the down payment and the remaining balance here. So, kung magbibigay si Eldrian, magbabayad na siya ng 30% down payment, magkano na lang yung matitirang balance niya or yung babayaran. Okay, so let us start. <clears throat> so, the price of the car is how much? That is 1,100,000 pesos. We have to multiply it by 3 tenths or 0 0.3 dahil 30% ang down payment. So, i-compute natin, multiply them, that will be 330,000. Okay, so, that is your down payment. Ayun na yung down payment ni Eldrian. Okay, next, para malaman ang remaining balance, isusubtract na natin yung 1,100,000 doon sa 330,000. And ang result niyan is 770,000 pesos. So, yun yung remaining balance. So, therefore, Eldrian will pay 330,000 pesos as down payment and the remaining balance is 770,000 pesos. Now, let us go to book balance or gross balance. It is a banking term that refers to the actual money accessible for a person or a company to use. 
it is a measure of what the bank has on hand before adding or subtracting regulatory obligations and items that will soon appear on its books. Example number 2. Eldrian wants to buy a car amounting to 1.1 million pesos. The agreement with the company is that the customer should submit all their requirements with a down payment before taking home the car. Eldrian wants to pay the company and get his money from the bank. His gross balance is 2 million pesos. How much will be his gross balance after paying the down payment? Okay, so gusto ni Eldrian na gamitin yung pera niya sa banko at ang laman ng pera niya sa banko is 2 million pesos. So, bakit niya pa kailangan ng down payment? Hindi niya nalang bawa, uh, bayaran ng buo yung kanyang bibilhing sasakyan. So, hindi natin masabi. Baka kasi may mga kailangan pang gamitin si Eldrian sa, sa iba niya pang pera. So, ang kanyang gross balance is 2 million pesos. Ayun yung pera niya na hindi pa nagagalaw doon sa banko. Pero ang tanong, how much will be his gross balance after paying the down payment? Okay, so solutions to find the answer, so subtract lang natin yung 2 million and 330,000 na 30% down payment para doon sa car. So subtracting them, that is 1,670,000 pesos. So that is the gross balance. So ganun lang siya kadali. Ayun na yung pinaka-updated niyang gross balance. Pero kanina kasi, 2 million pesos. So, after nun, since mababawasan na yun, kapag ka na-update na yung kanyang um, bank account, so, magiging 1,670,000 pesos na ito. Okay, so therefore, his gross balance will be 1,670,000 pesos. Let us now proceed to the current increased balance. This term is used to describe the total amount a client needs to pay that includes the interest or penalties earned by unpaid loan balance that is supposed to be paid but we're not able to make it in time. Okay, let's have an example. The total current amount due to a purchase made by using credit card is 55,286 pesos and 50 centavos. Based on the agreement, the minimum required payment is 7.5% of the total amount due. If the client pays only the minimum required payment, a charge of 3% of the remaining balance will be carried on to the next bill. If there are no purchases made for the next 3 months and a charge of 3% is added every billing period, what is the required monthly bill for the next 3 months? Okay, so I am going to create a table here. So the first column will be for the time or month. For the next column, that's the total amount due for the month. And for the third column is the minimum required payment for the month. Suppose this is the zero month. So, hindi pala lakad ng isang buwan dito. So, syempre, ang iyong total amount due ko rin is 55,286.50. Wala pang payment na nagaganap. But the minimum required payment nakalagay dito is 7.5%. Kung makikita niyo dito, meron tayo ditong 7.5%. Ito siya. So, sabi niyan, based on the agreement, the minimum required payment is 7.5% of the total amount due. Since this is the total amount due, we will get the 7.5%. 7.5% is what in decimal. So, Kailangan, mem, um, alam nyo pa rin yung pagkuha or pagtransform ng percent into decimal and vice versa. So, 7.5% ito, no? Marami kasing nalilito rito. So, ipakita natin kung paano siya magiging decimal. 
So, yung 7.5, i-move lang natin yung decimal point 2 times to the left para maging decimal siya. So, it's just simply dividing by 100. So, move na lang natin to the left 2 times, 1, 2. So, magiging 0, 7, 5. At nandito yung kanyang decimal point. So, pwede tayo maglagay ng 0, pwede na namang wala. So, therefore, 7.5% is 75 thousandths in decimal or 0 0.075. So, multiply natin yun. Therefore, the minimum required payment will be 4,146 pesos and 49 centavos. Okay, so, lalakad na ang isang buwan. After one month, so, itong minimum required payment, for example, nagbayad, no? Ibabawas ngayon dito, no? Nakalagay kasi dyan, if the client pays only the minimum required payment, kaya imaminus natin yung sa total amount due and the minimum required payment. So, magiging 55,286.50 na total amount due. Babawasan natin. For example, nagbayad siya ng minimum required payment na 4,146.49. Subtracting them, that will be 51,140 pesos and, zero, uh, and 1 centavos. Okay, so now, ang gagawin natin, etong pinaka answer dito nakalagay kasi dyan a charge of 3% of the remaining balance will be carried on to the next bill so yung 51,140.01 magi increase ito ng 3% so eto na yung iyong 51,140.01 mag add tayo ng 3% nya 3% niya is 3% of 51,140.01 or just multiply 51,140.01 by 0 0.03. 0 0.03, that is your 3%. Okay, so multiply muna natin to. Apply niyo yung MDAS, multiply. That will be... Then add niyo na yun, no? So magiging 52,674.21. Okay, so this will be your total amount due for the month. After one month na yon. Okay. So next, magkano naman ang minimum required payment mo para dyan? Kukunin naman natin ang kanyang 7.5%. So to do that, we will just multiply it, ito, by 0 0.075. That is the 7.5%. And multiplying them, that is your minimum required payment for that month. So, that 3,950.57. And then, mula rito, magma-minus na ngayon tayo. For example, nagbayad na yung client, no? Yung 52, yung total amount due, babawasan natin ang minimum required payment. So, magma-minus na tayo. After 2 months na yun, no? So, kapag minus yan, or sinubtract, magiging 48,723.61. And then, madadagdagan na naman ito ng 3% or 0 0.03 in decimal. So, that will be, okay, nadagdagan na siya, plus, ayun, meron siyang plus, 0 0.03. That is the 3%. So, multiply mo na to, then add by the 48,000, magiging... 50,185.35 And then, magkano naman ang minimum required payment? For example, magbabayad na naman siya. Babayaran niya lang kasi is minimum required payment lang. Magkano yon? So, mumultiply na naman natin ito by 7.5% or 0 0.75. So, now, multiply by 0 0.075. So, multiplying them, that will be 3,763.90. Ito na ngayon yung binayaran niya, no? So, kung magbabayad na naman siya, babawasan na naman natin yung total amount niya for that month. After 3 months, magiging 50,185.35 minus, babawasan na natin ng minimum required payment. 3,763.90. So, ang kanyang, ang kanyang amount due is 
46,421.45 pero mag-i-increase na naman ito ng 3% may charge kasi siyang 3% so that 46,421.45 madadagdagan siya ng 3% noon so multiply nyo to then add by 46,421.45 magiging 47,814.09 and magkano yung minimum required payment kapag ito na yung kanyang um, current increase balance so kunin nyo 0.75 or 7.5% that will be 3,586.06 so itong naka red na font na ito ito yung current increase balance okay and then, itong naka-blue na to, ito naman yung mga minimum required payment. Okay? So, as you can see, ano nangyari sa kanyang bill after 3 months? So, yung 55,000 niya, 55,286.50, 47,814.09 na lang. Pero, magkano na yung nabawas na? Ang dami na, di ba? Kaya, mas okay na bayaran na lang yung inyong um, current amount due para hindi na kayo magkaroon ng interest or penalty. Or, if it is possible na hindi na kayo mag-credit card, um, mas okay na hindi na lang gumamit nito para wala kayo magiging um, bayarin. Dahil after a month, Siyempre, may darating sa inyong mga bill. Dadagdag pa yan sa inyong magiging problema kasama yung inyong mga utilities. Okay? So, pero siyempre, kung responsible ka naman na bayaran ang mga, ang mga utang mo dito sa credit card, eh, siyempre, mas okay yun. Okay? So, that's all for today. I hope you enjoy learning about our topics. And before I end up my video, I would like to give my special thanks to Mr. Eldrin Balikan. And I hope you learned something. Goodbye!